the early 1960s is a great time for the development of the single lens reflex camera. Nikon was doing really well with the Nikon F and even the Russians were joining in and East Germany came out with something that looked quite different. 61, it came out with the Pentina. Pentina later developed into the company that we know as Pentagon and this although it might not look at it looked like it from the front this is a single lens reflex camera it's a little bit more conventional up to a point inside because it has got a penta prism when we look at this camera first we can't see our obvious penta prism so we think it might not have one well it has inside but it has got something that a lot of single lens cameras haven't got. And I'll come to that just a bit later. Now let's look a little bit at the practicalities. Loading this camera is a bit different. We have a lever here that takes the back cleanly off. That's a bit different, isn't it? And even instead of having the riding mechanism on the top, we have, well, we have the rind on there, but the rinding bed mechanism is here. Come to that again, because that's a bit different. Well, actually I will mention it now, because if you're loading a film, you need to bring that out. And this is different to any other camera I've seen. You've got a sort of loose lever there that then goes back into that little small recess there to rind the camera the film back at the end. Quite different to anything else I've ever seen. So we put the film in and it loaded very easily. To get the film counter to one we do have this little lever at the top that we need to um, advance. To get the number back to naught we have to advance this little number device here. So we get the numbers back to naught. The later Pentatini did have a light meter and when I bought this recently I had the choice between this and one with the light meter but I didn't, didn't think the light meter was working so I didn't buy it. Um, this the shutter seemed to be working because I have heard from numerous sources that this is a superb camera However, it's rare to find one that works. And the reason it is problematical is because of the shutter. Now, you might not have noticed, but let's open that back again because there was something a bit different. You might not be able to see that, but where is the cloth for the focal plane shutter? There is no cloth. There is no focal plane shutter. This camera is a leaf shutter. What? Well, other 35mm cameras at this same time, early 60s, like the Kodak um, Retina and even the Zeiss Icon did have leaf shutters. The East Germans had a slight problem with shutters because they had lost the capability of making shutters, leaf shutters after the war. So they had to, had to start from scratch. And what is interesting about this camera, as I said, it has a leaf shutter that works from 500th of a second to one second. It has a choice of lenses. The lens, let me just remember how to take the lens off. Oh yeah, the lens is on the breech here and you just turn the breech and the lens pops out there and there was a choice of lenses. This lens on here is a Tessa lens so it's a very nice lens, it's a 2.8, 1.50mm. So how do you use this camera? Focusing obviously through the lens, we have aperture here which I think was probably linked, but the link isn't working so well. Um, aperture there and the shutter speed here. Oh, we can see that link is sort of working. And click. 
I wasn't completely sure of the ride on, but it is riding on. So I took it out. Was it going to perform? Was it going to work? Well, it did. It worked very well. Let's have a look at the results. Well, actually, when using this, the first shot, I was quite pleased. I thought this is moderately sharp. It's a um, post box and it was taken in the evening and the light was beginning to get a bit dim and this is probably on about f4 5.6 and i think i was using a shutter speed of about a 60th of a second and again there's um this photograph is fine it's relatively sharp and i first of all when i looked at this film i thought well this is okay but I think if we begin to look a little bit closer and some of the other shots, for example, the next shot here, I think we have a bit of camera shake here. And I think I've then moved to a 60th of a second. It was a very dull evening, but I suspect the shutter speed on this camera is not accurate. I expect the camera is old. And again, this shot of the main street it's absolutely fine but if we started to enlarge it a little bit more i think we would see a bit of camera shake there and this shot illustrates that fact very much i think it's first of all i thought is it just out of focus but then when you look at that sort of blur i think it is basically camera shake and my in inclination is to think that um the shutter shutter isn't that accurate i'm very tempted and i will take the camera out again on a brighter day and use it at one um, hundred and twenty fifth of a second and see how we get on an interesting camera enjoyable to use thank you for watching bye for now